Hey, it's Longest Solo Ever here on Longest Solo Ever 2, and today we're reacting to the best music video ever released. No, I'm sorry, we're, we're reacting to one of my music videos. That's right, we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel here, folks. So last week I released a music video for my song Code Red, which I wrote about the EXE Fatal Error. Error? Error? I have trouble saying that. I made it with the help of my friends Mr. Shrew, Manises, and even Anorak Warriors, the creator of Fatal Error himself. And you guys have really seemed to like it. It's up to over 160,000 views right now. So I'm super thankful for that, and I wanted to take a moment to walk through the music video, walk through the song, and talk about the production of both. But first, if you want more videos like this one, please subscribe down below for more posted every week. Is it conceited of me to bob my head to my own song? I, I write these songs for myself, people. I write, like, exactly the kind of music that scratches my particular brain. So I'm not going to apologize for, for enjoying it. I'm sorry. This song is in B minor. This opening is three chords. B minor. C sharp diminished. And then B flat minor. These don't make any sense. There's no, like, amazing theory here going on. And then this second time around, it's B minor, B flat diminished, and then G diminished. Something interesting about diminished chords, you can kind of cycle through them in, in thirds. Because they're, they're symmetrically shaped, they're all just stacked diminished thirds, and you can follow that through the entire chromatic scale all the way, and they, they just kind of interchange naturally. So in this case, I'm stepping down from that B flat diminished down to G diminished. And, and it kind of, it lets me move the chord without functionally moving anywhere, without really going anywhere, just kind of running in place. Building the intensity here, right? There's a couple things doing that. One is the drums are getting louder, that drum loop, that not like classic drum and bass kind of loop. The next is that siren rising in the background. And then finally, the synthesizer playing that initial riff. There's a filter over it that's closed and then is slowly opening up. Take a listen for those three elements as things rise up. Right here. Slowly building in intensity. And now here's that thing that I kind of talk about sometimes where we pull out everything for a moment. We, we sort of pull the rug out from under you for just a second, acting as a, as a way of launching you forward into the next section, building that tension. And that's what we're doing here. The instrumental drops out. We just have this big boom sub drop going on and nothing else. Right here. And then coming back. And we're into the verse. So something I was experimenting with a lot on this music video is this dithered effect. And dithering is the process by which a nice clean gradient like this becomes this cool blocky pixelated effect. It actually does a whole bunch of math in there to figure out what arrangement of pixels with way fewer colors than this super clean millions of colors kind of gradient pulling it down to just 32 colors to work with. That means there are only 32 colors in this entire screen right now, between all the mountains and trees on Angel Island, between the text, the water, and the sky, this whole gradient, meaning this sky really only has probably 10 color shades to work with, 10 distinct pixel colors. And so it will do the math to figure out what arrangement of kind of hashing these colors together will make it look like a cool gradient. And there's lots of different options for patterns we can use, different patterns that have been used by different systems and different artists over the years. Like this is the one that would have been used by CRS Software who made a lot of great DOS games back in the day. But in this case, I'm using the Bayer 8x8 pattern and reducing the resolution by four times. So this is four times smaller than it originally was drawn. Here's the original render size. And you can see that's like way too small to see the pixelation effect. So we cut down to one fourth the resolution and we get this cool effect. Now, above that, we have this other separate effect that I used on pretty much the whole music video called Signal. Uh, this is one that Saruki turned me on to. Saruki messaged me after, I think, 
I think after Overthrown came out, maybe like, hey, I see you're using um, Red Giant Universe VHS, which is this other VHS plugin I've used a lot. You'll you'll recognize kind of the the look of it if I drop it in here, right? You've seen that that kind of vibe in my videos and all my Mandela catalog stuff. We've seen this VHS look, right? And it's cool. But Saruki was like, hey, you got to check out this plugin. It's called Signal. Uh, it's by a company called Zabex. I think if you just Google signal after effects, uh, you'll find a really sick trailer for this. And it just lets you do such cool, like super destructive things to this footage in a way that makes it look and just kind of like distort like an old CRT television would have, especially over like an analog connection, like an antenna or cable. Super cool, super cool effect that was like integral to the design of this video. So thank you, Saruki. These visuals were all rendered in Blender. You can see we got a million shots here. Here's Angel Island. And in fact, Angel Island was created with something called geometry nodes, which this is the first time I've really messed around with them. They've been in Blender for a little bit, but this was the first time I really tried them out. I really dove in to learn how to use them. And uh, yeah, they look like this. This makes you an Angel Island, like literally from scratch. There is no input geometry on this. I didn't model a single inch of Angel Island, and I got a fully textured and materialed island. Uh, I did model the trees, that's not entirely true, sorry. I modeled these individual trees, which look ridiculous up close, that's great, and, and I just have one of those that I'm using as kind of a particle instance throughout this. I will not, you know, take the time to go through these geometry nodes for you, but in short, each one of these controls a different elements, each of these like spaghetti threads. So like this controls the height, of the island. This is the height of the trees on the island. This is apparently nothing. <laughs> there's how much of the island is covered in the water shader I added. And there's the other end of where the, the beach ends. And so you can see how it's constructing this whole situation from literally just combining a bunch of math, which is crazy to me that you can do this. And I'm just scratching the surface of what you can do with geometry nodes. I'm so excited to mess around with these more in the future. So that's all rendered out in After Effects, brought into Blender, and then composited. And what compositing means is taking those individual pieces and combining them. So it starts with this gradient background. This is just like a simple gradient in After Effects. The text sits on top of that and it's lightly animated. I've got a script in there that like randomizes the character that it displays as it fades in. That's fun. Then the background drops in and it originally rendered with this crazy like colored reflection. I think because the, the actual background had a sunset going on in it because I wanted that kind of coloring for the island. That's what Shwu had originally put in the storyboard. And so I had to make an adjustment layer over top of that. That's just manually masking like the blue back in to that water. I have a separate layer for this second line of text. Oh, this is fun. I duplicated the text layer and blurred it. So this is like, this is not actually on the water. This is fake. It's a fake reflection. It's just upside down and blurred a little. Uh, and I used the water image as a displacement map. So you can see it's like following the curvature of the water, literally just saying, if the water is dark, shove this a few pixels to the right. That's all that's going on there. And it works. I'm not going to break down every shot in here, but there's there's just a few fun things to talk about. One, this is an actual image being played on that screen in Blender. I rendered it out as a movie in After Effects first, just some footage of Sonic 3. And then this, this text on screen, and that actually plays on the television in there. So it actually kind of flickers light around the room a little bit. It's fun. Also, this is a Mountain Dew Code Red can. I had to find like a label online and then manually model a can to wrap that onto. That was that was very fun. This was one of the most fun scenes to make in Blender. I just got to remake the entire Blue Sphere level that I grew up with in Sonic 3, so that was so much fun. That looks like this in Blender. And spoiler, it's again, geometry nodes, uh, deciding where these spheres get spawned on the big sphere and uh, just kind of like setting up the geometry for everything. And then we have Fatal himself pop up here. Fatal has a lot of fun rigging on him, uh, especially the use of inverse kinematics or IK, which is something you'll hear animators talk a lot. Basically, it just means instead of me having to manually animate each of these bones individually and try to imagine how this like kind of snake like head would move, I can just put one control bone here and move it around. And the whole thing just kind of follows and figures it out. It's great. You're just The guitars in that whole section are actually just Sega Genesis guitars. Uh, I use a synth called Chip Synth MD by Plogue. 
uh, which just does, I, I think it's the best Genesis FM synth out there. Uh, it does an amazing job of both ripping patches from the original ROMs, but also letting you like design nice sounding patches from scratch as well. This is a very fast moving scene. There was a lot of like very short cuts over and over. There was a lot to pack in here. This is the Fatal Error model that Manny designed. We'll see. We'll get to see it up closer real soon. Uh, but Manasees did an amazing, amazing job sculpting this. I had so much fun solving this scene because Shrew had like really cartoony running legs in the storyboard for this. And I was like, how do we how do we do that with 3D animation? I'm not I'm not the into the Spider-Verse team. I can't do the the smears and stuff really well. Uh, but if you look, like we need these like whoop, 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 whoop kind of legs, right? And so my solution, this is so stupid. My solution was to take an image of Fatal's legs. I just like literally pulled it out of the render. I cut out his legs entirely. And then I just rotated two copies of them around over and over and over again. And we got these fast spinning legs. So anytime you actually see those legs in the animation, they're actually just like a ping, like a 2D image floating on Fatal as he runs. It's great, I love it. That is my favorite animation in the whole thing is this amazing crawl that Manny did. Manny handled most of the character animation on this. Um, I did handle this ball transformation. So he rolls down from this ball and then drops out and then just like spider walks across the ground and it's so cool, it's so good. It's so just creepy. We'll talk about that ball transformation in a later shot though, that's so much fun to animate. I love Tails' movement on that as well. This this whole shot is beautifully animated. I love it. Uh, these are Mr. Shrew's drawings. They were in the original storyboard, and I was like, these are just perfect. We're going to use them. <laughs> okay, that's the shot I want to talk about the ball in. So right here is where Fatal transforms into a ball. And this transformation is not complicated. <laughs> and you, you may have already seen, you may have already, I, I've given away the, the game here. I just have him kind of scrunch up a little bit, and then I just, I just hide him underneath the level geometry after that. This ball, I had so much fun making. Check it out. This is kind of a complicated situation. I'll, I'll unbuild it from the top down. Okay, so it's just a sphere. It's literally just a circle. And then I remove some random faces from it, and I can, I can take more of them if you want to see like that. But what I do is I actually animate how much of them I'm taking. So at first there's almost none. They're almost all gone. And then more faces start to show up. And then I leave just a few by the end so we can see some texture moving. But that doesn't quite look like a, like a sonic, you know, spinning kind of ball. So next we have a smooth modifier, which will just like kind of smooth out those rough edges, right? And then finally, this one is the real key. This twist modifier, it takes that original shape and it just kind of like, it twists it, right? It just does that to it. And now, as you can see this kind of construct from nothing, now it really looks like a spinning sonic situation. The only other thing to add into the scene was this particle effect. And here it just spawns a bunch of these little spheres. But when you see it in camera in motion with the motion blur and everything, it's a really convincing look, right? And especially when it gets baked over the top, with the dither effect and the signal, like it just, it looks great. I love a good dance metal track. All my biggest hits have been dance metal tracks. You drop a four on the floor beat under some distorted power chords and it just, it just feels good. This is a catchy chorus. I had so much fun with this. Very simple chord progression. We're in B minor. I'm playing one, six, three, and then five. And again, just following chord tones. Write fun melodies, follow chord tones, and you win. That's it. It's easy. This is where Shrew's storyboard really blew me away is when Metal Sonic's entrance comes in. 
and this was this was the most fun to animate. I did the animation for this scene. I had a lot of fun with it. Just like doing this super anime entrance here, zooming in on metal, real close up shots. And this, this was so much fun. This is just a stock like anime lines thing I downloaded. This is from Motion Array, I think. So here's that shot in After Effects. And you can see I just fade in the anime lines over the background, but under metal. And those anime lines just look like this. It's just this and I flipped it around so it was facing the same direction he was flying. And it looks great, I love it. I turned it red and used the same one for Fatal. Here he comes. It's at a slightly different angle. They give you a few options. And it just added so much more intensity to the shot. Like, without it, it's fine. But it doesn't really imply motion because we're so zoomed up on him. We've lost view of the landscape around him. And the background is way too far to give you, like, a good parallax effect. So these anime lines just kind of sold all that motion for you. It's great. And then they meet in the middle. I think I just, like, boost the exposure like crazy. Oh, I just shake the camera like crazy. <laughs> when in doubt, if you need like a good transition to show intensity, just shake the camera like crazy and, and the motion blur will take care of it for you. Uh, this wasn't in the storyboard. I think it was just like a generic Gentbot poster, but I thought this was funnier. This is, and, and Shwu and Manny were both very, like, clear on this. This is the dead Peter pose from Family Guy. It's very good. This is a very fun shot. Someone in the comments referred to this as Eggman Gangnam Style, and that, I see it. I see it. This is Shwu's favorite shot in the entire storyboard. Uh, they were very excited about this one, and I had fun animating it. I love how Eggman just, like, bounces a little when he hits the ground. It's great. Again, geometry nodes handling this like like corrupted pixelation all over everything, as well as the, the fatal rock hand arms. We've got a Langston Silver sighting here. For the love of God, please buy this plush. And and seriously, I mean it, folks. Please. Please buy this plush. There's only a week left in the campaign. Come on, we gotta meet that goal. Please, there's a link down below. Come on. This is that same construction as the Sonic Ball. I just made it uh, have an emission shader. So it was like a glowing ball of electricity or something. This shot. <laughs> <laughs> I really had fun making this. It was just me and Manny in a voice call, just thinking of every stupid thing I could pack into this shot. So I started with like actual things I've done. Green Hill Funk, Friday Night Funkin' Covers, Week 2 of Versus Longest Solo Ever, which is still coming out, I promise. It really is. Quick Start Music, Tales from Rukon, my old D&D channel. Anybody remember that? You should go check it out. 8-Bit Solo, Longest Solo Ever Originals, which is what we're going to dive into for the bridge. And then the rest of these are just goofs, just the absolute silliest things I could think of. Uh, we've got FL Studio Fanfic. We've got 16 bits. Solo, which is like a, a horrific The Thing-esque body horror version of 8-Bit Solo. Quick Start Baking, which is very good. That was a suggestion by Manny. Boomer Memes was also a suggestion by Manny, and I chose Success Kid, which is very good. Uh, I also have the three-part joke of copy pastas, creepy pastas, and actual pasta. And then finally, good songs never release. <laughs> And, and I asked Manny, hey, what's the thing people always want me to write about, which would be very good and I will never, ever do it. And Manny was immediately like, oh, Hollow Knight. You're never going to write a Hollow Knight song. And, and he's right. He's absolutely right. I'm never going to write a Hollow Knight song. I'm sorry. Cut to three years from now when Silk Song actually releases and I do write a Hollow Knight song. Don't, don't take my word for this. So this is the section of the video that Anorak storyboarded. Anorak Warriors is the creator of Fatal Error. And he just sent this to me, not even expecting it to be in the video, just because I sent a version of it to him early, just because, like, he created the thing. He should hear it. And he was like, I, I just wanted to animate this section because I had so much fun with it. And I was like, hey, can we can we use this because it's really, really good? <laughs> so Anorak boarded from here until uh, Come Closer to Me and Shwu took back over. But this whole section is so cool. We get a lot of brand new, like, official Fatal Error Vessel designs. And you can go watch the actual storyboard over on Anorak's channel. I'll link that down below. That is just a photo of, that, that's like the original Gabriel 
painting, which I found online. It's just like some like wall decal you can order on, on some website. So I found the original painting, cut it out, and then like drew Fatal over it. Uh, and then Puppet warped it slightly in After Effects. You can see him like wiggle a little bit. That's what's going on there. This one, Anorak actually animated. That was straight from the storyboard. I was like, hey, can I just get the actual version of that? Because you drew it better than I ever possibly could. Then we have the one who waits. Manny sculpted this one. Came out beautiful. Uh, that's just the Bendy model I ripped from the original game, which I used in The Ink Demon is Coming. Hide. Manny modeled Hypno for this one. It's uh, absolutely so cool. I love that the head is just like floating. This is the fatal Oh my God, getting the camera to time perfectly and fly through the pendulum is the single hardest thing I did in this entire video. <laughs> this is the actual end model ripped from Sonic Frontiers. And then I like fractal split it down the middle and, and gave the inside this red emissive shader to give it this look. This is also the actual uh, Doom Eternal model ripped from the game. <laughs> this was a really fun shot. Uh, when I was shooting all the live action sequences for this, Mr. Shrew was in the voice chat just watching. I set up the camera that I use for, for this, like the one you're seeing my hand on right now. I set up that camera just pointed at the back wall so Shrew could watch while I, I shot all the live action sequences. And they were just laughing so, so very much the whole time. That's fine. Here's, here's Intruder. Okay, here's the actual final comp. You can see it's real. It's real clean when you see it without the... <laughs> without all the effects on top. Like, look at that. Look at that cutout. That's beautiful. Perfect visual effects work right there. No, when you know something's going to be like baked to hell with VHS filters over it, you don't you don't worry about perfection too much. So this was me animating Fatal like by hand to match over my face in Blender and then cutting it out in After Effects afterward. But the original footage, here we go. Here's the original footage. Ah. <laughs> Wearing an Under Armour hoodie. Can you see Can you see the Under Armour logo in the final shot? Hang on. <laughs> you totally can. Wait. Did that make it into the mastered shot? Oh my god, it did. <laughs> That's really funny. I'm surprised no one's called me out on that. The fact that you can just see the Under Armour logo on the, on the hoodie. <laughs> I meant to Photoshop that out. <laughs> uh, some people have said this looks like Mark Zuckerberg and I can't unsee it ever since. This is a visual reference, and I had to confirm with Shrew, because I was like, hey, is this that? This is a visual reference to my This Comes From Inside music video, which is a real deep cut, Shrew. That was a good call. This, I had a lot of fun recreating the Overthrown set for this shot. Um, everything's red, obviously, for Fatal. Uh, quick death music instead of quick start music, with the tagline, you want to learn music, replaced with, you want to suffer. 50% off with code Fatal. By the way, that's a real discount code on quick start music now if you want to use that it does the same thing as the code lse but it's fun because you get to use fatal so that's an option <laughs> the way i did this shots was with a workflow uh using ebsynth or eb synth it's the same thing joel haver uses to make his super weird surreal cartoon videos basically i take the original footage which is something like this i used a ai preprocessor just to do the outlines it just kind of catches all these like canny edges. And then I painted under it with just the solid colors and I did some rough shading. Uh, and you'll notice the shading really doesn't have to be like good at all, right? Because that dither is gonna cook right over this. And if you can see in the final shot, we're not worried about the shading looking perfect. Because the dither and signal are just kind of cooking over all those edges, it looks fine. But yeah, I, I painted in a few keyframes throughout this. You can see here's the first one, here's the second keyframe, the third, and then Absinthe just interpolates between these while fading. And it's not perfect. You can see there's, wow, there's a really bad like fading ear there. But again, we are just overcooking this so much, just completely baking this, this situation. And it looks great. This is the same way I did the uh, the alternates faces in the Overthrown video. I would again draw a few keyframes uh, and then let EB Synth interpolate between them to give me the full animation. Replaced, 
This is the original footage from the Overthrown music video, uh, pulled into the background and given that same like red and dithered treatment. There's also a subtle effect on here, reducing the frame rate of things. I don't remember at what stage I did this. I think it was before I ran it through EB Synth, but I cut it down from 24 FPS, which I shot it at, to I think like eight or 10 frames per second, which gave it this more like retro kind of hand animated situation. And it also made it way faster to process because it's way less frames. This is the section of the song where I'm referencing every song I've written before. Well, not every song. I forgot two of them. And there's one line that just has nothing to do with any songs because I could not think of anything else to put there. And I'm so mad at myself now because I could have easily just put another song that I forgot to reference in that spot, but that's okay. Do you know the two songs I forgot to reference in this? Put them in the comments down below if you think of it. I was so happy when I saw Toon Dean in the storyboard for this one. I love this design that Shrew did for Fatal Toon Dean, and I got to animate him by hand again. So here's Toon Dean with his insane keyframing situation. I'll take the, the effects off so you can see him in all his oddly shaded glory. Here he is as the original animation was. He's a few different pieces. I drew these in vector right in After Effects. There's a pretty solid shape tool. I brought in Shrew's uh, drawing, and then I just kind of traced over it each layer. Um, we can break that up part by part if you want to see how he's built. Okay, so here's his body. There's his arms. His arms are rigged up with what's called rubber hose. And it's what it sounds like. It's a it's a plugin that lets you make rubber hose animation style connections just by placing like your, your shoulder and your wrist and it figures out everything in between. It's great. So I parented the shoulders to the body. I wiggled it back and forth and you get that kind of animation. It's awesome. I have his shirt collar drawn on top of that. There's his head, which just kind of bobbles back and forth. There's a lot of good like secondary motion of every time his head hits the end of an arc, it just kind of bounces a little. I had fun with this. This was originally just a moon and it was just gonna be a local 58 reference, but I was like, this line is you've met a terrible fate. Let's make it the Majora's Mask moon. So that is actually the Majora's Mask moon model straight from the N64 game. And then I just repainted it to, to fit the fatal error colors. Uh, here's here's me like reenacting the original intruder shot, right? That's the line that has absolutely nothing to do with anything, but uh, like dead, like cult of the lamb, it, it works. We went with that. No this is this is my favorite line in the whole thing. Was getting to shoehorn a dread reference in here, and so I had to visually do it as well, right? And I had to dig so hard to find the model I made for the Emmy head because I did this when Dread had just come out. There were no models or anything for Emmy. I don't even know if there are now, but I had to model that from scratch. So I had to dig like three hard drives ago to find the Blender file for that and pull it over. And I'm, I'm very glad I was able to find it and recreate that shot. In retrospect, I should not have made the sky red because you cannot see the fatal hands at the top of this. I'm very upset with myself. And now we get into the most insane part of the music video. Uh, first off, animated by Manny, the the dance that, that Fatal does. So much fun. Okay, so going through there, that was originally supposed to be different locations. On the original storyboard, it was Mario, Kirby, Deltarune, Undertale, Pizza Tower. I forget the order, but that's because Anorak had designed official vessels for the characters from those games. But one, the locations that Shrew drew looked really hard to model, and I had like 12 hours to finish the video at that point. And two, I haven't played Deltarune or Pizza Tower, and so I went with games I've played, games I thought would be really fun to see Fatal in. So here are the four scenes I modeled for this. The first is 1-1 one, one from Mario. And I really like the kind of like diorama style texture I gave all these things. It's got like just a little bit of a, I don't know, fabric-y or some kind of material to it. I like the little bit of texture and I'm, I'm kind of bummed it gets lost in overcooking it with this, but it, it's still fun. I thought about maybe doing it without the retro dither effect, but uh, then you'd see how badly modeled Kirby's World is. I did, a, I did a real rough job with Kirby's World. I did Kirby a disservice and I feel bad, but Again, time crunch. Zelda's world is especially just jank city. I'm not I'm not the proudest of my modeling on the Zelda level. You can see I was trying to remake these rocks and we ended up with this weird, I don't know, tooth looking thing. Is it it is what it is, but it came out okay. I am, however, very happy with how Pac-Man's world came out. I love this like stylized vibe 
the neon world I put here. It's I had a lot of fun with this. This was very fun. The first time, the first like dozen times I watched the storyboard, I did not get that this was Robotnik's announcement from Sonic Adventure 2. And so I wasn't really like, I wasn't really thinking about this scene or whatever. And then Manny and Shrew and I were all hanging out in voice chat while I was working on this. And Manny's like, oh nice, the uh, the, the Robotnik announcement scene. I'm like, the wait, the what? And then I rewatched it and I got so, so excited that I get to animate. I've come to make an announcement as Fatal Error. Like, come on, that's a dream. Like Manny and Shrew can tell you, I was giddy when I realized that. So here is the stage for that scene and you can see I've got I've got the original shot here for reference just so I could arrange the lighting and the coloring and everything in a way that that really worked for the vibe and I think I got pretty close not perfect a lot of this texture is really hard to replicate and and I again did not have a ton of time but I, I'm pretty happy with how close we got I'd say so Fatal is inside a giant like crazy colored dome it's absolutely wild and he's got a reflective floor underneath him there's a few lights shining directly on him. So I tried my best to match his his movements and everything. It's not it's not like perfect timing, but I got I got close enough to have fun with it. Uh talking about the text in the background, we can we could just scroll through those one at a time cuz I had fun with all of them. They are in order. This is the fun is infinite with Sega Enterprises message from Sonic CD, the error screen. This is a fatal error has occurred, of course. Shimp Goober. That's an inside joke from the LSE Discord. If you're not in the Discord, you have no idea what that means and I'm so sorry. Suck mid. Again, a, a joke from one of my live streams. Someone just commented that in the middle of a live stream and we were we were all so so taken aback by the beauty and succinctness of the comment lemon tear of course this is the actual beginning of the official speech in the real game sonic the hedgehog adventure 2 battle popcorn with a spoon uh, contrary to popular belief i do not in fact eat popcorn with a spoon anyone telling you otherwise is lying pro tools is the industry standard sorry pro tools is the industry standard there we go your code is mine those are all just kind of set with their origin as the center of this stage and then spinning around at, at various intervals to make sure they all try to pass on screen at least once I think the only one that may not have made it, I think Shimp Goober may not have made it on. Yep, there's Shimp Goober. Shimp, do, Shimp Goober didn't make it. It's a shame. It, it was hard to, to time everything in a way that got on screen. Oh, I had so much fun animating the shot. This was this was my this is like my proudest moment in here, and it's so stupid. I posted it on Twitter like a day or two before the music video came out, though, because I was just so happy with it, and it made for a fun teaser. Okay, so there's a few steps to what's going on here. One, I have stock footage of just a a like crossing light at a pedestrian crosswalk. This is from either Storyblocks or Motion Array, I don't remember, and it's just a simple like handheld shot of this stoplight. Then I photoshopped, and you can see it's a really messy content aware fill, but that doesn't matter. Um, just an all off version of this. And then I had to track it onto the original because this is a layer of its own, right? So using software called Mocha AE, I tracked the movement of just this chunk and you can see it follows along, right? Just this chunk of the stoplight following along. Thanks to Roe Panagonti for turning me on to this software. I was doing it manually in After Effects for so long and it always just took forever. So thanks Roe for, for speeding this up a lot. <laughs> so I tracked that all off version of the light onto the original. And then this is an all on version of the light also tracked onto the original. The thing to note is this has what's called a track mat, meaning it's actually looking at another layer to decide what it should show and what it shouldn't. And that layer it's looking at is actually just Fatal Error dancing. So I have an actual video of him. I just took like a straight on render of him doing that same dance and then did a whole bunch of things to it. Let's see what I did. Okay, this is funny as to why I had to do this. First I had to rotate him so he was on axis with the grid of these lines in the light. Right? Then I ran a mosaic filter over that to like pixelate him, rotate him back into place so it kind of lines up. It's not perfect. You can see that, right? But it's fine. Oh, and then I skewed it. Now it's pretty good. There we go. Take the saturation out of it so it's just white. Brighten it up a little bit so it's it's a, a little brighter and it's going to show the actual uh, light we want it to show. Posterize time. This is important because originally it was super smooth motion and that's not, that doesn't sell the effect the way I want it to. So posterize time cuts it down to 12 FPS. And now you can see this is a little choppier. It feels a little better. And finally, I blur it a little bit. And now it looks like it could conceivably be coming out of that light, except we're not using this as the actual image. We have this light that's referencing this image we just made to turn on and off the individual LED lights within the original 
stoplight. Isn't that so cool? I'm so proud of this shot. I love like good workarounds with VFX like this. It's I had so much fun with this. I did the same effect, although frankly not as well, with the lights in this building. And you can see it's in a few buildings. I think I just went over here and this one all the way to the left. It's okay, right? Uh, this is a model of the Eiffel Tower that I just put against an actual sky image. Uh, and then using geometry nodes, just covered it in, in the, the goop, as it were. <laughs> I was working on this and Manny dropped into voice chat and all Manny saw was just Mount Rushmore on my screen with no effects or anything. I think I even had the Wikipedia article for Mount Rushmore up or something because I was, I don't even remember why. But yeah, this is, this is a photo scanned version of Mount Rushmore, both without and with the fatal heads on it. It's something. <laughs> This is just a map or like a satellite image. And then I did some noise distorting over top of it. And that's code red. I had so much fun making this music video with Manny, Mr. Shwu, and Anorak Studios. Oh, and this is important to note. This drawing is by Retro RSP. This is from the original album artwork for Code Red. So thanks, Retro. I loved working with a team. This is the first time I really let other people into the video creation process, and it felt really good. The artwork came out so much better than I would have been able to do on my own, and it was a lot less stress for me, which is nice. So this is definitely the way I'm gonna be making music videos going forward, working with these other amazing artists. If you like this video, please like and subscribe for more like this one posted every week. And if there's a video you want me to check out, leave it in the comments down below. As always, this video is sponsored by Quick Start Music. Quick Start Music is my collection of online music production courses designed to help you learn to make music the way you want to. There's courses on mixing, songwriting, music production, and so much more coming very soon. So head over to quickstartmusic.com, use the code LSE at checkout for 50% off your first order, and start your music making journey today. That's Quick Start Music, the ultimate online music school. And like I said, this is the last week to pre-order your longest solo ever plushie. So come on, head down to the link below and grab a plushie. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.